Hey, I just wanted to give you a quick recording, um, short video for just some, just some um, points to remember for um, regarding your trauma uh, review, and um, you know that um, of course you can have different types of trauma. You can have um, pneumothorax, hemothorax, um, your pneumothorax can be open or closed depending on, um, you know, open would be the, like a knife wound, um, the air enters plural space through an opening, and then your clothes would be like a broken rib that um, actually punctures the lung within the lung um, cavity. So the treatment for that is um, a chest tube, usually. Um, you know, of course, it, um, wanted to give you uh, some points for the chest tube. So, what is the chest drainage system exactly? Well, it collects fluid, air, and or blood from the thoracic cavity. Um, and this is to restore normal intrapleural pressure so that the lungs can re-expand. That's the whole goal in a chest tube. And if you notice, I've got, um, well, I don't have it labeled, I got this picture uh, from online. And um, actually, um, someone else had the picture. And um, it was labeled, so I thought it was a great visual for you. You've got your suction control. And um, either it's water controlled or you'll have a dial and um, that's your suction control so it's usually on this side of the um, chest tube you've got your ocean which is the wet and then your oasis which is the dry chest tube next you have of course you're um, gonna hook wall suction up right here on both of them there's a port there where you can hook up the tube and then hook it to the wall suction and then you have the water seal chamber or the air leak chamber I think your book labels this is the air leak and this is the water seal but it's all one chamber if you notice um, over here same thing it's all connected if you look very closely at the chest tube you'll notice that it's connected and then you've got um, when your patient is hooked up to the chest tube, you'll often see, oops, you'll often see titling in this chamber. And that's basically just fluctuations, or this chamber, either one, but it's basically fluctuations in, um, the fluid there. Um, sometimes when it, um, they inhale and exhale, it'll move, just like, remember I said, like the ocean, um, titling. If you see um, jacuzzi type bubbling in either one of these chambers, that is not a good sign. Uh, so, titling is okay, fluctuations with breathing, even if they cough and it bubbles a little, that's okay. But if you have a constant jacuzzi type bubbling, that's not okay. There's a leak somewhere, and you would need to try to find the air leak. Um, <clears throat> And so, yeah, you want to try to find the air leak. Check your connection. See if the patient's laying on the tubing, that kind of thing. And then, as far as just some points to remember, you always want to keep the chest tube system below chest level. So when you're helping your patient to the bathroom, you would want to keep it below chest level. You also monitor drainage. A lot of times, um, the nurse is... Um, responsible for that and I, I made a little um I put blood there I mean I made red marker there and I put you a line here so part of nursing management is monitoring that drainage and also measuring it and a lot of times you'll see you use like a permanent marker sometimes people put tape so that they can um put you know when they actually measured it at the end of their shift now yeah it's sometimes a BCT might do it, but you are responsible for, you know, charting what type of drainage, what does it look like, 
and monitoring the amount. Your book says if you have greater than what, uh, 200 in an hour, of the first, right after putting it in, that's not a good sign. You call the doctor or, or over 100 an hour after. Uh, you just also want to remember you never ever milk it or strip it. It's no longer recommended. And also, um, clamping is not recommended unless you have to change it out, and that's only briefly. So you wouldn't um, necessarily you wouldn't clamp it um, either. Now, if the drainage system breaks, then um, place the distal end in sterile water, and that's something else you need to remember. So this is just a quick five-minute video to kind of give you some important points with the chest tube, and. Uh, I, I hope you have a good rest of the day, and I will see you soon.